So here we go. Welcome to another episode of the Black Table Talks. And today we got real estate agent extraordinaire, um, the infamous Harvey Lewis. Tell them a little bit about yourself. Yes, sir. Harvey Lewis. I'm a realtor, mm -hmm. investor. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in the industry for about 24 years now. Mm -hmm. I started off rehabbing properties initially. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into the business to be an agent mm -hmm. when I got into the business. I just wanted to be able to get my own properties. And save some money. Trying to save a couple <laughs> dollars. It was a different game back okay, then. Okay, yeah, all right. You ain't gotta, I ain't gonna get it really sad. I'm not gonna get my license. You don't have to worry about no, it. I understand. All right, so the, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring Harvey on, because um, not only is he my main real estate agent, I do most of my business with you, buying and selling but um you know obviously we kind of grew up together but that's not the reason the main reason is because i find that most realist real realtors um or real estate agents are not also investors they only are agents um and you have a, a unique experience and knowledge not only are you you're used to working with investors such as myself? You're actually an investor yourself, so you have that experience. And like you just acknowledged, um, you started off flipping houses back 20 plus years ago when I was doing it. You know, when I was 19, 20 years old. Um, you know, and you have a, a, a similar not story as mine, but we started kind of in the same area neighborhood. I was just a little worse than you were, but you know, you was a little in the streets and one of the first ones to get out get your head together, get your mind together, and get on that, that right path in life, right? Correct. Okay, what brought that on, though? What, 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 what initiated you to flip a house? Well, I was a carpenter before that. I was working construction. Okay. I was in a union. Okay. 21, uh, local 21. Mm -hmm. I was a carpenter. It's good with my hands. Mm -hmm. I was fixing on other people's homes. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I said... Uh, I can do this myself. It wasn't that many people flipping homes back then. Right, it was exactly. a lot of rental. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was doing rental. Yeah. Um, I tried the rental game, mm -hmm. but I didn't like it as much. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to turn, you know, turn the dollars. I was yeah. used to turning mm -hmm. money, you know, once yeah. upon a time as well. So mm -hmm. that's why I decided to flip some homes. Um, and I spoke to someone that was doing it, an older guy. Mm -hmm. He was buying and flipping homes, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, he kind of told me that. It was good money in it. So. Okay. What What was the first year you flipped a house? What year are we talking about? 2000 and... Oh, 2000. Okay. All right. And when did you actually get your real estate license? 2002. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And you've been... Um, since you've had your license, you've um, experienced some real true ups and downs in the real estate business. Talk a little bit about that. Yes, sir. So when I originally got my license... Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm going to go back a little bit. I was flipping homes, mm -hmm. and then the market actually crashed. Okay. Everybody hear about it, talk about the market crashing. Mm -hmm. um, the market crashed. But you had already had your license. I already had my license. Because that was the crash of 08, right? 08. But okay. it kind of started about 07, the okay. end of 07, okay. and then it went into 08. Okay. But, uh, so I go back from 02. So in 2002, I was flipping some homes. Yes. Um, it got slow a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I was operating as an agent. I was only I wasn't making a ton of money, but yeah. it was enough to you know mm -hmm. to live off of. Yeah. Right. So um, we did that. I mean, I did that for a while. Um, flipped a couple homes. Had a couple rentals. Didn't like the rental, like I was saying, because people stopped paying their rent. Mm -hmm. was chasing, I was chasing tenants. Yeah. Um, flipped a couple homes. Oh, it was going. It didn't start going well. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. The flipping game got very, very yeah, good. Yeah, very too. good. Right. Right. Um, we were doing about three homes a month mm -hmm. in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and we talk about six figures selling yeah, in the neighborhood. Each house, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was great. Um, I was doing some other things, as far as some other entrepreneur. Right. Avenues. Music business. I was doing music. Right, yeah. right. So I was traveling a lot. Mm -hmm. When the market tanked, mm -hmm. I was still on the road doing music. Yeah. I was still, you know, spending money like. Yeah. We like, were right, you know, like, like it was still was coming sweet. in. Yeah, right, right, right. right. And, uh, you know, and it put me in a, mm -hmm. a bad position mm -hmm. uh, financially. Mm -hmm. um, I was spending money as fast as I was making it. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, or spending it a little faster. Well, spending yeah. it faster. Mm -hmm. If you if you're spending more than what yeah, comes what in, then that's in. an yeah. issue. Yeah, of course. Uh, bad money management. Mm -hmm. You know, I really wasn't. Uh, I didn't take any financial literacy classes. Right, we were right, learning right. on the fly. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. um, and then. Uh, 
the crash happened. Yeah. So I'll be getting to the crash, we get to the crash. Mm -hmm. Um the funds just was, you know, was depleted. Yeah. The bank stopped lending at that mm -hmm. time. Uh -huh. uh, you couldn't get up no one could get financed. I mm -hmm. got stuck with a bunch of homes. Yeah. Um then we uh rented some of them out or a discount, sold them at a discount. Yeah. Did the money, you know, it was all when I turned around it was all gone. Yeah. Yeah. You know, almost went through a divorce, you mm -hmm. know, some yeah. personal things happened. Yeah. And uh, I sat down one day, mm -hmm. if I'm not moving too fast. Mm -hmm. um, I sat down one day and I wrote a uh, a letter mm -hmm. to myself. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down all my bank accounts, mm -hmm. and I still have it in my wallet to this mm -hmm. day. Everything was negative. And yeah. then I said to myself, you never go back mm -hmm. to this. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I, the next day after that, mm -hmm. I just started marketing myself different. You know, the market started coming back a little bit. Okay. So you really start focusing on more being a, a real estate agent Correct. other than being an investor. Okay. So I, um, you know, that's when you see me on the cover of the Horizon yes. magazine. Mm -hmm. And then I started uh, doing these, those flyers that you pull the name off of. Yeah, you know? yeah, I remember that. And just putting them everywhere, you mm -hmm. know. Then I started, uh, you know, I started getting calls, a lot of calls from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, things started to, to grow from yeah. there. Okay. All right. So in terms of the two, you have experience pretty much consistently over the last 20 years as being an investor and being an agent. Mm -hmm. Which one do you make more money from? Make more money as an investor. As, um, than an agent? Than an agent. I do well as an agent, though. Okay. But you make more money, profit, money stay in your pocket as uh, an investor. Yes. Okay, all right, that's stand good. Stand in my pocket. Yeah, yes. stand in your pocket, not gross. Not gross revenues, not you sold $10 million of houses, but how much did you keep compared to how much do you keep as an investor? Well, actually, with me, it's a little different because, uh, you know, I am successful as an agent. Mm -hmm. So if I had to look at my numbers, I would say it's 50-50. Okay, all right. For the last couple years. Okay. 50-50. Well, over the last, let's say over the last 10 years. Over the last, over the last 10, ten years, definitely made more money as an agent. Okay, yeah, as an agent. So that's what we're I have. About. Yeah. Okay. All right. Because I do well. So give us an example in terms of you don't have to tell us how much money you make, mm -hmm. but how much in terms of um, housing, the the number, the gross sale of numbers on the average yearly basis over the last ten years. Gross gross uh, commissions. No sales. Sales. Uh, yeah. Why well, average seven and a half million? A year. A year? A year. That's Seven and a half yeah. million dollars in sales a year. That's your average. That's average, yeah. Okay. That's good. All right. All right. I, 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 listen, I know I play a part in that. I know. I don't know how many of those millions, but I know I play a yeah. part in that. But that's pretty good. So that's so what's the goal. Been, what, what's, been, what's the goal? That's, that's usually my goal. Okay. If, if I'm right. less than seven million dollars, I'm not doing well. Too okay. So, so what's been your biggest year of the last 10 years? Uh, 11. 11 million? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, man. Yeah, so we, I guess people can count your commissions based on that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we ain't got to be a mathematician to, to know that. Right, yeah. All right, good, good, good. So I know you had, at one point in time, you had a bunch of rental properties. Now you're doing some commercial things. Um, uh, but are you still flipping houses? I am flipping homes mm -hmm. currently. Okay. The commercial field is new to me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you kind of triggered that in mm -hmm. me. Okay. Um, I kind of watch you. I mean, we say, if you realize when we really sat down and mm -hmm. got serious about flipping homes, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, we kind of, I kind of, you know, followed the model. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, we sat down mm -hmm. and I remember you saying, people really buy homes right now? Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. that was after the market had crashed, yeah. right? Yeah. It was coming yeah. back. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was like, yeah, you know, yeah. I can find the homes. Mm -hmm. You got the crew to put the homes together. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee I can sell them. Yeah. So there's a lot of people trying to flip homes now. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's doing it because yeah, they're it on TV. Yeah, of course, of course. And mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm at a position that I can be selective who mm -hmm. I work with. Yeah. And that's kind of how I am, mm -hmm. you know. And I catch a lot of, you know, flack. Yeah, I, I catch more than you do, probably, because <laughs> you because I refer yeah. I refer people to you. Yeah, so yeah. I'm selective, but every everyone doesn't mm -hmm. renovate their homes. Mm -hmm. The, what I would say the right way. Yeah, of course. A product that I want to put my name on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not personal. Yeah. You know, and I tell them that, you mm -hmm. know, and I'll get up, give them advice. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, you know, just because you're seeing something on TV and, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, everyone can't do this. Yeah, without a doubt. What, let's, let's talk about that because we're here 
to give information to small business owners, entrepreneurs, and potential investors, whether it's real estate, other businesses, but we're here talking about real estate today because I, I, I've i never, just in the last 24 months, I don't know if you can relate to this, over the years, I had people interested in talking to me about getting in real estate, but over the last two years, it seemed like everybody and their mama would like to get in real estate. We know from being in Cleveland, and this probably happens in a lot of cities, but we know being in Cleveland that people see somebody else in the Benz or the, 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 the BMW or the Rolls Royce or whatever, and they say, whatever they're doing, that's what I'm going to do. We know that. and I'm not saying that's a bad thing nor a good thing. I'm just saying don't judge a book by its cover, right? Get that information, get that knowledge before you pursue it. But over the last two years, the same, I guess the social media, you know, uh, Greg, Big Business, all these out-of-town investors, me, um, it's so many, um, you know, other uh, men and women here in Cleveland that's making a name for themselves, flipping houses, making good money. I'm hoping, I'm assuming they're making good money. I know I did. Um, that's doing real estate, so now everybody's trying to get into real estate. Are you... Seeing that also? Yeah, my phone stay ringing. Yeah. <laughs> For people. So what what specific advice that you've seen people make so many mistakes doing from them first five steps trying to get in real estate, what specific advice would you give individuals, men and women, thinking about getting into this real estate game? Well, first of all, I would say do some research. Mm -hmm. Sit down, come up with a plan, and write it mm -hmm. out. Everyone say they want to do it. Mm -hmm. Then I ask them, okay, well, what do you want to do to get in? And they, yeah. they have no idea. They just know they want to sell real estate. Yes, yeah. You, if you don't have the biggest issue, mm -hmm. the largest issue you're going to have with real estate, if, and flipping homes is contractors. Contractors, we I mean, agree. I, I just, I'm just telling you, like right today, yeah, I was running sure. in here mm -hmm. because I have a home inspection, yeah. but the guys didn't show up yesterday or this morning, so yeah. I had to go do it myself. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Um. Today, hold on, I just want to put that in perspective. Yeah. You've been doing this 20 plus years. You're a real estate agent and an investor. So you have to assume that you've had dealt with so many contractors over the last 20 years. And today, probably 100 plus properties bought and sold that you've owned and flipped, or probably more, uh -huh. properties that you've seen or sold and got a commission. You're still having problems finding contract. I know, yeah. but I want these people to know. You're still having problems to find contractors. That's an issue. It's a, it's a big issue. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I wish we can rub a bottle. Yeah. You know, those yeah. guys come. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, no matter if you're paying them top dollar. Yes. It's, or, or, I mean, whatever. Yeah. It's just these guys just, for some yeah. reason, don't want to show up at work. People reach out to me and ask me to refer contractors all the time. And I don't know if they think I'm hating or or whatever. I want to hold them back when I say I don't have anybody to refer you. If I did, I would still be flipping 20, 30 houses a year. It's crazy. And you've seen at one point in time, I did 30 in 2016. Now how many am I flipping? Yeah, not really doing anything. <laughs> Nothing. Man, go find me some more uh, yeah. investors because my man's not doing it. These contractors are nuts. Everybody think, because they see an Amish that work for me, they think all Amish are built the same. Uh -huh. And I know you for a fact had experience last year with one. All Amish are not the same. Just because they got a long beard and wear a big straw hat, they're not the same. It's not the same. You have to treat them like you would treat any other contract. Do your due diligence, do your research, see who they're working for, go see their workmanship. I have contractors that have called me, said they want to do work for me. And I'll surprise them on a Wednesday and say, what's up, bro? Where you at? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so-and-so. I want to come through and see what you're working on now. Right. Oh, oh, I was about to go out for lunch. Yeah. Oh, I was about to do this. Or I'm about to do that. Yep. All right, Isaac, like, don't call me back again, bro. You know what I mean? Because yes, that's how I do surprise visits. Just like if I have a tenant looking to renting one of my properties, I tell my, my, my property manager, go pop up at their door and do a walkthrough. Do a house visit and see how they're living now. They're not going to change when they move into my property. So we'll know exactly what we're dealing with. So that's that's with contractors. I don't what what do you think it is? Where what, what happened to all the contractors? Well, 
and I say this all the time, mm-hmm. I think a lot of these contractors are chasing deposits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've I think that's the, that's the issue. Yeah, they're doing it. Well, especially with these investors. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you know, as I know, you probably have more than me horror stories of these out-of-town, out-of-the-country investors yes. and lost so much money dealing with these contractors because these contractors and tick their they money and robbing blind. And I used it's to crazy. refer, you know, mm-hmm. for my out of town investors. I used to refer contracts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's right. not. They're not. They come, they come looking. They come looking for me. Of they're course. Not looking of for course. Contract, of course. Right? Of you course. said this guy, you know. So I stopped yeah, doing that. Yeah. Um, they like, well, I seen your, your home that you posted. So mm-hmm. can you just do it? No, I can't do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's tough yeah. enough for me to get these things done yeah. myself, right? That's the biggest issue. Yeah. I had a, um, last year when I sold those two apartment buildings. I sold them to the guy from Colorado. And he asked me, do you have somebody that can, I can refer you to? I gave him two names. I said, they're not the cheapest, but I can stand behind these. He didn't. He decided not to call, use either one of them. He called somebody else. Uh, uh, I don't know what, what nationality he was. He wasn't black. I, I don't think he was white. He came over. When I was giving him the keys, he introduced me to the guy. I asked him, well, what's your company name? I never heard of it. He had said he heard of mine. I was like, okay. All right. I left. Less than 30 days later, that investor reached out to me and said the guy took him for $60,000. He can't find him. He disappeared. Then he was asking me to refer an attorney, <laughs> and I referred the attorney next. But I, we've had so many of those stories, man. I tell people there's different strategies to this. The first thing that I ask people, what are you looking to do? Are you looking to quit your day job? Or are you just looking for some additional residual income? Uh-huh. Or are you looking to make this your full-time job? And that's how I advise people. Because there's so many people get that mixed up. They work a full-time job, but they want to flip houses. Right. It's insanity. They think that you can do this on the side. If it was that easy, we would be still flipping 100 houses right. a year. I mean, it's just not that easy. I, mean, I have the freedom to, mm-hmm. I, you know, my own time. Right? Mm-hmm. I make my own schedule. Yeah. And it's difficult to... You know, do these projects and work. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. But I, mean, I make it work because I have the right, flexibility. Right. This is what you do yeah, so, every day. Yeah, every so, day. yeah, so as far as uh, everyone looking to get in, uh, like I said, do a plan, mm-hmm. right? Get you a good agent. Mm-hmm. You know, don't try to, you know, take the shortcut. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of people, yeah. you know, I'm not paying 6% commission. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to find a property on my own. I mean, you call me to this day. Yeah. You call me up, yeah. you know, can you run some comps for me? Yeah. What is this property worth, yeah. mm-hmm. worst case scenario? Yeah. You know, and I'll give that to you. Yeah. But don't cut out the ages. We've been here yeah. before the wholesaling game mm-hmm. started. We're going to be here after it's so, over. Yeah, this you know. is what I tell people, the smart asses that think that they want to do it all. And they looking at how they can save that 3% or 6% or whatever on every deal. And people have asked me why I never became an agent. Because I'm a firm believer in this. I do what I do, and I let somebody else do what they do. I believe, I know I can't do it all. I know you have to have a team to take it to the next level. I've never seen one individual person by himself with no team go to that next level. I've never seen it. So why why should I wake up one day and think that I'm going to do it on my own? I'm going to become my own contractor, my own manager, my own real estate agent. I might as well start an insurance company too. Or bank, you know, that's ridiculous. So my mindset is, if I'm run, if I got to run around and look for the properties, and I got to deal with selling the houses and showing the houses and meeting potential buyers over there, marketing the houses, I'm not gonna have time to rehab and find get more houses. I I need to stick with what I do, and I let other people stick with what they do. You know, so the six percent. People looking at the 6%, but I don't even count the 6%. I look at, if I let you get that 6%, how many more houses are we going to get? But think about this very important thing. You know, not trying to throw anybody under the bus, but I want to give you all some real information on my mindset. And you don't have to say yay or nay, but just think about this truth. If you're an investor and you go buy a property and you renovate it, you can't be naive to think you have the only house on the market for sale. What is going to motivate that real estate agent to sell your property compared to selling the other four or five different properties for sale? That's 6%. They know not only 6%, they can get a bonus. They have to establish that personal relationship. So the, the, the services of a real estate agent is just like the service, personal services that you should have with your accountant, with your attorney, with your uh, 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 PR person, 
you know, you have to have a relationship. And based on that relationship, they'll be a little more geared towards to help you sell your house faster than selling Joe Blow House that you don't know. If you're giving them a good product to sell, which I'm a firm believer in. Yeah. Because there's people that list their homes and they want to mm-hmm. cut the commission. Yeah. We can see that when we, yeah. you know, when we look at their properties. Yeah, yeah, know, exactly. They only want to give you 1%. Right, right, right. You know, a lot of people don't, they're not investors like agents like me, you know, yeah. like myself. Yeah. They're looking and they make a living off of this. So mm-hmm. they're looking, why are they going to show this property on the same street? Yeah, exactly. 1% commission yeah. when yeah. they're giving three, three and a half. Right, you know? right, right, so, right. I mean, yeah, I'm not listening. I'm not knocking anybody for doing what you decide to do in terms of saving money, but just don't be naive to think that is is nothing is going to go along with that. It can't just be all positive. It got to be some negative to that because you don't control that situation. I've sold so many houses. We've sold so many houses when people are in the neighborhood showing another property and either see us at the property, see me at the property, see you at the property, and call and be like, hard. Is that somebody's rehabbing the house? Oh, yeah, this is one of my clients. Can we come and see it now? You're more motivated to show that house. I would say this, and I tell people it all, all the time, and you can confirm this. I, I think well, one time, maybe a couple of years ago, we had put the numbers together to see how many houses that me and you have sold together. I think it was over 100, right? Yeah. Out of those 100 houses... How many of those houses sold in less than seven days on the market? I mean, majority of them. I majority. Mean. I tell people that. <laughs> it's a reason. Can you do that on your own? I did it with him. I do it with him. Whatever he do, I don't know what he do. I don't know how many deals he has saved that died. Most relatives would have been like, oh, this deal dead. And three days later, he coming back. Yeah. You know, like, the deal ain't dead. We closing next week. You know, and I wrote it off. I don't know how many times he has, he called me and said, man, what's your bottom number? And I say, man, 240000 And he come back and say, we got two fifty. Yes, sir. Hold on, bro. I told you my bottom was two forty. I got you two fifty. Yes, sir. I don't know how many times we've done that. I, at least two dozen. You know what I mean? So that's, for me, that's what I'm telling y'all. You have to establish a relationship with the people on your team. You don't have to be best friends. But you have to have a clear understanding. I'm going to, as an investor, you're going to deliver a good product, a a product that he can feel good about selling, right? And he'll go out and sell it. Or, and I'm not just saying him, just trying to exclude every realtor where people be blowing up your phone. I'm just saying with whatever real estate agent you choose, have that relationship. Create a team situation because we are partners to a certain degree. That's I, I consider Correct. he's one of my partners. Without him, I can't sell this product. Some, you know, and, and I, I'm happy. I'm proud to say most of my products are gonna sell themselves. So to have somebody to believe in my product is just an extra bonus. Right. You know, that'll go out and sell it really quickly. And I don't know how many times out of those over 100 houses we sold, we set the comps. We set the comps. Everybody can't set the comps. We set the comps. And that's the difference. You know, I have agents. Yeah. Well, it come back to me that yeah. I'm speaking to other agents yeah. saying, Harvey running these prices up mm-hmm. over here. Yeah. You know, I'm like, yeah. if someone's delivering a product mm-hmm. and someone's willing to pay for it, yes. that's what the property is for. That's it. That's it right yeah. there for sure. That's it. So what other, any, any other specific advice? What you give somebody that's trying to get in this real estate, other, like, just anything specific. What What's the number one question that you get when people call you about getting into the business? Um, the number one question, can this property sell? That's usually the, if I, you know, if I get into this, because mm-hmm. people are a little nervous. Yeah, of course, of course, in, of course. And they may be incurring some debt, mm-hmm. right? Using yeah. some kind of hard money or... Mm-hmm. And we should probably kind of touch on that a little well, bit. Well, let's touch on that, okay, for sure. So hard money, private lending. Mm-hmm. They give you short-term money, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And they got to be paid within a specific amount of time. Yeah. If it's not paid, they come to take the property. Yes. So, Which, what type of terms? are they? Because I've never dealt with hard money. I've heard it. I have my own considered hard money, and we'll talk about that. But, yeah. Okay. So most hard monies, they do 12 months. Some do 18. Okay. Right? Short-term. Mm-hmm. Um, they may charge you 10%, 15%. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it just depends on who you use. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're if you're talking about 12 months to, to buy the property, mm-hmm. rehab it, mm-hmm. and resell it, 
You know, you got a short window. With mm-hmm. FHA, you need to own the property at least 91 days. Right, before, yeah. Right, so you need to get in that property, mm-hmm. rehab it, mm-hmm. and put it on the market and sell it mm-hmm. after the 91 days unless you do a conventional. Yeah. Um, if you don't have it done within them 12 months, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to lose your house. You don't have the house. Yeah, they take the know? property. Um, With all the renovation. Everything. Okay. You know, so that's a scary situation for most people. So they say, you know, I can, most of them think they can do it yeah, quicker than 90 days, yeah, you yeah, know. Right, right. But like I said, I'm kind of selective and I'll advise would, people. Would you ever suggest someone uses hard money for their first rehab? First rehab? Never done it before. Never rehab the house. They just know they want to rehab it. Um, I mean, I could advise somebody on that. Okay. Know, if I'm involved in the situation mm-hmm. because I have the you know, experience. Okay. So if I can, you know, help someone mm-hmm. from A to Z, okay. which is the program I'm getting ready to roll out. Okay. I'm only going to deal with about seven people. Though. Okay. You know, a program I'm rolling out. I'm going to work with them from A to Z. And mm-hmm. I'm not doing it for free. Okay. But from A to Z, mm-hmm. I'm going to, we'll go out, we'll find a house. I'll show mm-hmm. them how to assess a home. Mm-hmm. I'll let them know what the after repair value is mm-hmm. once we dump the home. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'll, I'll help them during the process with the contract. In terms of renovating the property. Yeah. And you'll sell the property. And I'm coming, helping them coming up with the design, the design of the property. Okay. So right. that's right. something I'm rolling well, up. What are you going to be charging? $2,500. Uh, or a flat fee, not a percentage flat of the sale fee. or anything. I'm still going to get paid as a realtor. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right, yeah, that makes sense. That's just me as a consultant. Okay. You know, and I feel like that's what my time is worth. Okay. What, what, what mistake are right, now we, 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 we gave people advice on... You know, um, before they become an investor, right? Some of the things to look out for, some of the questions to ask. Now, because I know you see this all the time, what's the biggest mistake you see people making? They've actually did it. They bought the house. They started the renovation. What obstacle are they running into? Other than contractors. We know that. Um, Just being there on their project or coming to make sure their project is working how it's working, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people, they'll start the project, they're all interested Mm -hmm. at the beginning, and then they disappear, Mm -hmm. you know? So time, you know, time gets away from them. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're working a job trying to get into another situation. Yeah, yeah. um, Or doing whatever. So that property is sitting there, Mm -hmm. sitting there, and I've seen that happen. Yeah. I mean, you know. You mm-hmm. have situations where the guys mm-hmm. started a project and the home is just sitting there. Yeah, of course, of course. You know, and they just, you know, they come back to it and you're talking about 11 months, especially on a hard money situation. Or not a hard money, even if they got their own money invested. Yeah. In, it seems like they come disinterested in it mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think that's a mistake. I think you, you should really be coming and assessing your project. Mm-hmm. Um, don't jump from this project. You found another project mm-hmm. and you're going yeah, to start this yeah, project because this yeah. one seemed better. So yeah. we put this one on the, yeah. the back, back burner yeah. and we're going to work on this one. This yeah. one is a slam dunk. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. an issue that I yeah. find with people that have their own financing, mm-hmm. finances. Um, that's a big issue. Um, trying to discount their agent's money, you know. Yeah. yeah. We've never had an issue. You mm-hmm. always said, I don't care what your money looks mm-hmm. like. This yeah. is what I need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, without a doubt. Even if it was, t- I think, 10%, 15% yeah. over what you wanted to sell yeah. the property. But yeah. that's never been an issue. Right, right, you right. Know? Mm-hmm. So, um, and, you know, I have some con- some some people who try to mm-hmm. discount me, but I know my value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I think people really should know the value of an agent. Like mm-hmm. I said, agents, I mean, it's a ton of new agents, though. Yeah, you know? I can believe it. It's a ton of new agents. Yeah, Everyone wants it. to be an agent now. Yeah. And this is not easy. Mm-hmm. You know, I talk to a lot of the new agents in the office and, mm-hmm. you know, they've been agents for a year, yeah. 18 months, mm-hmm. not doing anything, you know, two yeah. deals. Yeah. yeah. So, and I, and I reach out to them because I need mm-hmm. a team. I can't handle the volume that I received yeah. as an agent. You know, yeah. we talk about yeah, that. Yeah, of course, of course. And uh, a lot of them was like, no, I want to do my own thing, mm-hmm. you know. Well, you, you want me to give you 50% or yeah. I'm like, it beats a zero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. But and people don't look at it like that. that. They don't look at it like yeah. that. They, everybody, you know, everybody look at, you know, the million dollar sale and say they want 6% of that. But what about 3% of 2 million? They don't, they don't understand. It's the exact same thing. Same. And you're on a team. Um, we see this. I don't know if in Cleveland, you go to Georgia, you see it amongst um, people of color all the time. They have teams. I've met real estate agents. They have teams. And here... Non African Americans, they have teams, you know. But have you? 
do is there any African American teams? Is like one main real estate agents, four real estate agents under him, and they're they're like juggling. Do we have that here? So I don't want to really make it a color thing, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, I've reached out to quite a few agents yeah. about building a team. I do have a team. Okay. Make it happen team. Okay. I have one agent up under me now. Okay. You know, my buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I've recruited or reached out to people. And like I said, this is what that, their return to me was. Well, I'm going to pay you, you mm -hmm. know, part of my commission. Yeah. yeah I'm already set stuff. up. I mean, I got tons of business that mm -hmm. I turn away every day. Yeah, I know. I know for a fact because I get those calls. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's difficult for me to handle that. Yeah. So, and that have been a, a delicate thing for mm -hmm. me to try to to handle everybody, but I yeah. can't. I'm only one person. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, my daughter's on. She's getting ready to get her license, so she gonna get all the money. Okay. Well, that's there the plan. Is. Yeah. If it works, yeah. if it works, that's what's it. So I, I wanted to tell people too. You know, I call you the hip hop. Um, real estate agent, because look, this, you know, this is my guy. You was in the music industry. We kind of grew up together, but I've obviously dealt with other real estate agents. And I'll tell you this, and I'll tell the people this. I don't know how many, at least a dozen times, we've been to houses to go look at a house that hit the market. Somebody stole the key out the lockbox because they're trying to prevent somebody else from being on the house, and that does not stop us. How many times I had to boost you up to climb through a window? <laughs> For a property. Well, I don't know. Two, at least a dozen times. I don't know how many times he had to climb on my shoulders or I had to boost him up to push him through a window to go open up a door. Yeah. Find an agent. Find somebody on your team that's willing to do that. And then you found a partner, an agent, to get some real money with. If you don't have that, if you got the agent to go over there and the key out the lockbox and... The key is gone. What, what we going to do? If that's their response, that's not the agent for you. Yeah. If you really want to go to the next level, you have to deal with people willing to do things that's not normal to go to the next level. Yeah. So that's why I came up with the mantra, Mr. Make It Happen. It is, yeah. We, you know, you, yeah. you said a few things, you know, yeah. deals were dying. A lot yeah, of agents, if sure. a deal is dying, they'll just walk away from yeah. the deal, give me a, you know, yeah. give me a release on it. But I, I always feel like there's always a way. Yeah. It's always a way that I've always been that way. Yeah. Though. Yeah. You know, I, from where we come from. Yeah. Exactly. You know, that's what makes me different. I move a little differently, mm -hmm. right? Because of uh, some experiences, my past yeah. experience. But uh, you know, I, I'm gonna make it happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's it's always a way to put a deal back together. Yeah. Unless someone just went and got some some new credit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or lost their job or something like that. Right. But we can right. Definitely, Obviously, yeah, you can't. Do so I mean, that. when I started off. You know, I was helping fix credit. So I'll get the credit report mm -hmm. and look at their job mm -hmm. history. Yeah. And I can I can pretty much pre approve people on paper just seeing their their information. Yeah. So yeah. I know. Yeah. You know, and I'll let them know. I mean, even clients now, if mm -hmm. they're on a on an edge, mm -hmm. I'll let them know exactly what they need to do to be able to be pre approved. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. So but we used to do it like that. Um, it didn't used to be a go find a loan officer, get your pre-approval. Mm -hmm. Once you get your pre-approval, come yeah, back. Right, it right. didn't used to be that way yeah, like yeah, years it ago. Yeah. It's that way. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have as much time to do it as much, but mm -hmm. you know I will. I still yeah. know how to do it. You know, If someone okay. send me a credit report, I can let them know what's going on. Okay. You know. All right. Um, so anything else specific that you want to get the word out? If somebody, an investor, or just a regular residential property Buyer that's just looking for a house or looking to sell their house, what's the best way to contact you? Uh, I can be reached on uh, at 216-253-6497 is my sale number. Um, I'm on uh, IG, Mr. Underscore Make It Happen. Mm -hmm. Facebook, the same thing. Uh, it was Harvey, Mr. Make It Happen. Right. And, uh, and what company do you work for? I work for Century 21, Century mm -hmm. 21 Premier Properties. Mm -hmm. um, I am a wholesaler friendly realtor. I know there's a lot of realtors that don't want to deal with uh, mm -hmm. wholesalers. So I'm wholesaler friendly. Um, I don't have anything against anyone trying to get some money. Yeah. Investor friendly too. Investor, Investor friendly. Homeowner yeah. friendly. Yeah. Homeowner. Buyer or seller. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Good. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. I appreciate you coming by. We can go on and on and on. We've been doing this a long time and talk about it, but we're just trying to get some information out. Hopefully it can help somebody move forward in their um, real estate endeavors, whatever that might be. All right. If there's any agents out there who looking to join the team and get some money, give me a call. All right. Good to go.